Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays for a Factorio tutorial. Today I'm going to run through how to configure a basic LTN setup. LTN stands for Logistics Train Network and essentially allows your trains to work like logistics bots, collecting from provider stations and dropping off at requester stations. In older versions of Factorio, this mod was more vital as it was the easiest way to prevent multiple trains going to the same drop-off station. However, now that vanilla Factorio has the train limits option, it's not quite as necessary. It does still have a few advantages though. It balances supply and demand stations more effectively, meaning that if you're a bit short on supplies, you don't end up with all of the copper going to the nearest station. It also allows you to set priorities, for example to only bring oil from coal liquefaction if there's a shortage of crude, or to take supplies to your mall before supplying science production. It makes adding in additional outposts, such as mines, much simpler because you don't have to faff around with station names or adding trains. It also allows you to have a much smaller fleet of trains and a central fueling point, which can be nice, but these are much less important. In this video, I shall show you a basic LTN system with all of the recommended settings configured, but I'll gloss over the more complex ones. A later video will touch on some of the more complex things this mod allows you to do. A basic LTN system consists of three types of stations. A drop-off station, where the goods are taken. A pickup station, where goods are supplied and a depot station where the train waits in between tasks. These use LTN stations instead of normal stations, which consist of a station, a light and a combinator. The light serves as the input for the circuit signals and the combinator serves as an output. The station works pretty much as it would in vanilla. Place the LTN station and then continue to set up each station like a normal train station with chests where the cargo wagons will stop and inserters to load or unload them. It's best to use filter inserters, just in case the system gets polluted by the wrong sort of items. Once you've got your basic station, you need to add a constant combinator to hold the settings for this stop. Let's start with a network ID. These allow you to set up separate sets of stations that won't interact with each other. Note that these are binary coded bit masks. If you don't know or care what this means, just make sure you only use powers of two for separate networks. Network IDs aren't strictly vital, However, if you start building without setting them up, then, you'll, then you can't use them in the future without reprogramming all of your stations. I'd recommend just setting them all to 1 until you want to do something more complicated. I would also recommend setting the train limit to 1 as well, to prevent any queues forming at the station. This can be changed later if you need to, but for now this is a good starting point. Next, since this is a provider station, you need to set the provide threshold. This is the quantity of, of a resource the station has to have before LTN considers it to be ready. So if the resource is lower than this threshold, trains will never be sent to it. You can set this as a number of items or as a number of stacks. Since a train always carries the same number of stacks, I recommend using this option for now. Because in this case I only have a single wagon on my trains, I shall set this to 40. However, if your trains are longer, just increase this number as appropriate. And that's the configuration done, so now we can wire everything up. Connect all of the chests in the station together with wires, so the station can tell what resources are available. Then connect them to the combinator, so the settings are passed through. And finally, connect to the light on the station. Make sure that you definitely connect to the light and not to the station itself. The station acts as a signal output, and the light acts as an input, so it's very important to get these the right way round. That's it. The provider station is now ready. So. Let's go and take a look at the requester station. These are slightly more complicated because you need to tell the station what type of item you want there and set your limits. Place down a constant combinator as before and set it to network 1 and train limit 1. We now need to configure the request which, as I say, is a bit more complicated than the provider. A requester station will request a train if the signal for a resource is less than the negative of the request threshold. Set the request threshold to a full train load, so I'll set this to 40 stacks as well. To tell the train what resources are required and in what quantities, we put in a negative quantity of that resource into the combinator. What number you pick affects how much of a buffer you have in the station. If you just put in the train capacity, a train will only be requested when the station is empty. If you put approximately double the train's capacity, a train will be requested when the station falls below one train's worth. For normal resources, I recommend using double the train's capacity as an easy starting point. For more expensive resources, you may wish to cut it a bit finer. I'm making an iron plate requester, so I'll put in minus 8,008 iron plates in here. That's 100 per stack, 
times 40 stacks in the train times 2 to give a buffer and then a negative to trigger the station. As before, hook all the chests together, connect them to the combinator and then connect them to the light on the station. I would also recommend connecting all of these to a power pole to make debugging easier. As you can see, this shows all of the signals including that minus 8000. We'll take another look at this once a train has arrived. The third and final type of station is the depot. Don't worry, this one is much simpler than the other two. This one doesn't need any loaders or unloaders. All you have here is an LTN station and a combinator. Once again, the combinator should be given the correct network ID, but this time the only other signal needed is the depot signal, and the number doesn't matter. Later on, you'll want to have multiple depots, so I would recommend you rename it something sensible like depot. The other stations can be given sensible names for your benefit if you want, but LTN doesn't care. It doesn't even care if provider or requester station names are duplicated. Now we've got all the stations set up, I'll prime the pickup station with some resources and build a train. The train needs to be fuelled and then sent to wait at the depot. Once it arrives there, LTN will hold it and then automatically give it the necessary instructions to satisfy the demands of the system. As you can see, the train quickly leaves the station, going off first to the pickup station to load up, and then to the drop off station once it's got a full cargo to unload before finally returning to the depot to await further instructions. Note that the station's light will change from green to yellow when there's a train with a route to it and to blue when there is a train actually in the station. If it ever goes red or white, you've done something wrong with the circuits. If we take a look at the requester station's current status, we can now see that the iron plates has increased to minus 4000. This is equal to the negative of the request threshold, so another train will be requested. However, if there were any more plates in the chest, the train wouldn't be called. As long as the supply can keep up, this will keep the total number of plates in the station between 4000 and 8000. So that's it. This is an LTN setup at its most basic. Now, I said this was going to be just the basics of LTN, but at this level it, it's pretty much pointless. You could do all of this with a single train and a pair of stations in vanilla. So let's go a bit further. Let's expand the network. I can copy and paste these two stations in further down. So now we've got two providers and two requesters. The train will now attempt to keep both requester stations satisfied and will alternate which one it goes to. If the provider stations both have sufficient supply, it will also alternate to which provider station it goes to as well. Now the single train is allowing resources to flow from two providers to two requesters without jamming up or favouritism. Additionally, if I want to, I can add a provider priority signal to either of the provider stations. These can be set to any number, positive or negative. The trains will look at all stations with sufficient resource and collect from the one with the highest priority. Similarly, with request priorities, the trains will deliver to the station with the highest priority that is actually requesting. I can now add in another pair of stations, this time providing and requesting copper plates. This will work in exactly the same way. The train will bring copper to the copper drop-off stations and iron to the iron drop-off stations as required. At this point, that poor little train is starting to struggle. There are so many stations demanding its attention. So let's put in some additional depot stations that are direct copies of the first one. We need to make sure that they have the same name as well. This allows to put in an additional train and now LTN will manage the pair of them, making sure that the right number of trains go to the right stations. You can also put in a refuelling system in the depot stations. This ensures that your trains will always be fully fuelled when they head out, so you don't need to worry about them running out. I usually put in an extra requester station in the depot to bring the fuel in. Fluids can be handled in exactly the same way, except that you'll need to use a train with a fluid wagon. LTN will happily send the correct type of train for a job. Also note that the stack size for any fluid is 1, so you'll be setting your thresholds at 25,000 per wagon instead of 40. One final note, the LTN mod has some settings which I would advise you to adjust. Go to Settings, Mod Settings, Map, and then scroll down to LTN. 
Here you can increase the update frequency if your computer is getting bogged down by the requests, although I've never actually had to do this myself. I would suggest dropping the message level to 1, errors and warnings, otherwise you'll be notified every single time a train sets off on a journey and will probably drive you mad. The request and provide threshold set the default values for these, however if you've programmed your stations the way I taught you, you'll never actually use them. I suggest setting them higher, perhaps to 10 million each, to prevent trains turning up unexpectedly when you're part way through configuring a station. Stop timeout tells the train to leave the station after this much time. This can be very dangerous. If something goes wrong and a train arrives at a station with more cargo than can be unloaded, it could then end up leaving the station and returning to the depot without being emptied. This could then mean that the station goes off on another job and takes that cargo to a station that doesn't know how to deal with it. Best case, you've used filter inserters and the cargo just ends up stuck in the train. Worst case, you've used non-filter inserters and un unloaded a load of copper into your iron system. If you set this timeout to zero, then the trains won't leave the station until they've finished unloading. So the worst case is that a train gets stuck and you have to go over there and sort it out. This is much less bad than polluting your buses. And that's it. That's everything you need to know to get a basic LTN system up and running. In the next video, I'll talk about how to get stations to deal with more than one type of item, how to make them work as both pickup and drop off stations, and I'll touch on train lengths as well. I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or come along to my stream every Wednesday night to ask me to explain live. I'm also streaming a modded Minecraft run every Monday, and summary videos for both of those go up at the weekend. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.